Hello everyone, my name is Gang Dong. I come from Monash University. My topic today is about sequential sodic and potassium alteration through a kinetic controlled fluid mineral interaction process. Since feldspar make up more than 50% of Earth's crust, it's the most common mineral that can go through sodium alteration to form albite or potassium alteration to form key feldspar. Sequential sodic and potassium alterations are common features in all forming systems, such as LOCG deposit or porphyry deposit. You can see that LOCG deposit is characterized by deep sodic and shallow potassium alterations. In LOCG system, halogens such as fluorine and chlorine are supposed to be critical in the hydrothermal system. Previous research have found that both plagial class or alkali feldspar can be replaced by albite on experimental conditions with sodium chlorine solution. This is a coupled dissolution reprecipitation reaction with parent phase be pseudomorphically replaced by product phase. There is anomalous chiton Roman feature at this sharp reaction interface. It's also found that even though porosity is well developed, there is no significant 3D interconnectivity between them. Since all the experiments are conducted with sodium chlorine solution and fluorine has supposed to be critical in hydrothermal system, we are curious what's the effect of fluorine in feldspar hydrothermal alteration process. We then designed experiments by using sanding, which is a certain type of alkali feldspar to react with sodium halide, that is sodium chlorine or sodium fluorine at 600 degrees centigrade and two kilobar. In some experiments, oxygen-18 tank water is used. Since chlorine and fluorine are not a composite component in feldspar, then the possible reaction is that sodium from solution would replace potassium in sanding to form albite, which has been observed before. However, our research shows some really interesting results. You can see that albite formed as a main reaction product in both sodium chlorine and sodium fluorine solution. However, a new key feldspar phase formed as a main reaction product in sodium fluorine solution. You can see that in sodium chlorine solution, albite starts to replace sanding at first, but then a new key feldspar phase starts to replace albite and can form ray around albite. This new key feldspar phase is characterized by higher potassium and lower sodium contents. However, in sodium fluorine solution, large amount of key feldspar phase formed within only one day, and the reaction product is characterized by this sanding albite key feldspar isolation texture. Again, this new key feldspar phase is characterized by higher potassium and lower sodium contents. Since key feldspar sanding and albite are solid solutions, we are curious does this reaction proceed through a solid state recrystallization process with sodium and potassium interdiffusion within silicon network, or proceed through a CDR process with a dissolution of parent and precipitation of product phase. You can see that pristine sanding has higher oxygen 16 and lower oxygen 18 accounts which means that the Princeton sanding has almost a pure oxygen-16. However, reaction products formed from oxygen-18 rich solution, such as key feldspar or albite, are characterized by higher oxygen-18. It means that the reaction products are precipitated from solution with oxygen-18 from solution to form the framework of new feldspars. Also, the oxygen-18 to oxygen-16 ratio of key feldspar decreased from 2 to 1.4 after five days, suggesting that oxygen-16 in solution increases with reaction time, which is a result from dissolution of sanding. Here is a brief summary of the reaction results. First, this is the first sequential sodic and potassium alterations ever found under closed experimental conditions. And second, Fluorine can accelerate reaction kinetic with a large amount of key feldspar formed with only one day. And third, the reaction proceeds through a dynamic coupled dissolution reprecipitation process. Based on these findings, we have two more questions. First, why do we get this sequential alteration on the lab-based conditions? And second, what's the role of fluorine in the sequential alterations? We then model the reaction of standing with three different solutions. In pure water, sanding starts to dissolve at first, but then the solution is buffered by sanding. However, in both sodium chlorine and sodium fluorine solution, sanding starts to dissolve at first, but then the solution is equilibrated with albite and key feldspar, which means that at equilibrium, sanding should be replaced by albite and key feldspar at the same time. But how can that be possible? 
because at experimental conditions, there is a Nisbet gap between key feldspar and bellbite, with the modern relationship between soluters and its equilibrated solidars. The green line represents sodium concentration in aqueous solution, and the red line represents sodium concentration in solid solutions. You can see that the aqueous solution equilibrated with key feldspar is still sodium enriched. And when the sodium concentration in solution uh, decreases from one to zero, the peritactic point would reach, which means that when sodium concentration in aqueous solution is equal to 0 0.85, this aqueous solution should be equilibrated with two different feldspars. One is albite and the other one is key feldspar. It explains why sanding will be replaced by albite and key feldspar at the same time, as we mentioned earlier. This phenomenon has been observed before in previous research with parent alkaline feldspar being replaced by key feldspar and albite at the same time. However, this model texture is different from our observed zonation texture. While our reactive sample from sodium fluorine solution may show some light on this reaction mechanism, you can see that half of this unreacted sample is characterized by higher fluorine contents which means the diffusion or substitution of fluorine in sanding. Because of its small atom size, this diffusion or substitution can increase the defect and vacancy with nitis that can provide the reaction space and increase the reaction kinetics. We then suggest that reaction kinetic rather than thermodynamic equilibrium plays a more important role in the reaction mechanism. Here is a brief summary of the presentation. First, the zonation alteration texture is observed for, for the first time under lab-based conditions. And second, kinetic factor rather than thermodynamic equilibrium control the reaction process. And third, fluorine plays a more important role in increasing reaction kinetic. If you have more questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you.